my kind of induction, if you like, into green politics was when I was a kid. Uh, my mum was a green activist back in the days when climate change, uh, the loss of biodiversity, uh, the, the over-harvesting of uh, biological stocks, of uh, things like the, the fish in the sea, these were regarded as fringe pursuits. Uh, they were not things that most politicians took seriously. Uh, they were certainly not things that most companies took seriously. And the level of public awareness, the level of political and economic response to these issues has grown really dramatically over the, the decades. I, however, don't believe we're yet at the point uh, where most political parties are really joining the dots. There are fundamental questions about the nature of our economy and its linkage to not only climate change, but the rest of the ecological emergency. It is possible to decouple economic growth uh, from these forms of environmental harm to some extent, but it remains pretty clear that the link uh, still exists, uh, that they cannot be decoupled entirely. And the arguments that the green movement brought to the table back in the 70s and 80s, that there were limits to growth, that argument still holds strong. Most politicians and most economists have still not moved away from the idea that everlasting economic growth from a finite planet is either achievable or meets the social needs uh, for the well-being of most people uh, in the world. So Greens continue to make this challenge. Scotland now has ambitious targets on climate change. We should be setting long-term targets on ecological restoration as well, with uh, so much of our land mass taken over by uh, appallingly destructive uh, and socially divisive pursuits uh, like driven grouse shooting. We should be restoring, rewilding uh, uh, our, our land and rebuilding uh, biodiversity. But we also have to recognise that so far, most of the uh, reduction in cli climate change uh, emissions, carbon emissions, has happened through deindustrialization, not through policy choices. And we are still failing to make the policy choices that are required in areas like transport, uh, as well as failing to make the rapid progress that's required in energy consumption, uh, both in homes and in businesses. Greens have made serious inroads into this, uh, not only through a long-standing champion of uh, energy reduction measures, energy efficiency measures in the home, as well as the move uh, away from fossil fuels and onto renewables, but also by challenging the more of everything approach that most governments offer on transport. We need to be reducing demand for transport by making sure that people have access to the things that they need, the services, the jobs, uh, the, the shopping that they need to do, uh, within a, a reasonably local area and certainly accessible by public transport so that people are not dependent uh, on using private cars. And electric cars on their own are no solution. We should be dropping the idea that a quick technical fix to what are fundamental sy systemic aspects of our society and our economy uh, are enough. They're not going to be enough. And I think finally, I'll just say, that we do have an extraordinary opportunity in the coming year uh, for uh, as we run up to, to hosting the event that would have been happening right now in Glasgow. COP26 is an opportunity for Scotland to be not only showing what we've done, but showing where we want to go next. That should mean keeping the fossil fuel lobbyists out of the COP. It should mean breaking our addiction to the fossil fuel industry, both for the jobs of the future and for our economic investments. Getting rid of publicly invested pension funds uh, assets in the fossil fuel industry would be one really good step, signaling that we support the divestment movement and that we recognize the fossil fuel industry is dying, will die, must die, and we should not be invested in the delusion that it has a long-term future ahead of it.